Kong. In the 1990s and early 2000s, Japan would become globally infamous for their brand of extreme reality game shows. Today, they seem like a relic of the past, like a distant memory, lost in a haze where it's hard to remember if shows like this could have ever really happened at all. Some of these shows were tame, others not so much. But today, I want to talk about one where I think things really crossed the line. Hamats Tomoaki, nicknamed the Subi, the Japanese word for eggplant. A then 22 year old man living in Japan and an aspiring comedian. Nasubi answers the call. Unsure of the details surrounding this job, he remains hopeful and travels to the audition on a cold January morning. On arrival, Nasubi realizes that there are 22 other men who have shown up to the same audition. At this point, they're told they'll have a random draw to determine who gets the spot on the show. No other details are given. Nasubi wins, if you want to call it that. The producers immediately blindfold him, cover his ears, and transport him to an undisclosed location in the back of a van. He doesn't know it yet, but he won't be home for a while. The producer accompanying Nasubi is Toshio Tsuchiya. He tells Nasubi the following. When they get to the destination, Nasubi is greeted with a sparse apartment. There's a small coffee table, a large stack of papers and a pen, a phone, a radio, a kitchen with a sink and single burner stove, a bathroom with a toilet and a tub, and an entire rack of magazines. They ask Nasubi to hand over all his clothes. Nasubi begins to realize what kind of game he's in for. He looks at the magazines and the papers on the table. Nasubi asks for his clothes back. Toshio says no. These are the rules. You must enter in magazine sweepstakes in order to win your way out. Anything you win, you can keep. The goal is to see if a person can survive only on sweepstake winnings. When you win 1 million yen worth of prizes, the game is over and you can leave. Nasubi is fitted with a microphone, and the room is equipped with a permanent camera. They remind Nasubi once more that the show is just in the pilot phase, and they're not broadcasting the footage. They give Nasubi a journal, a small amount of bread and water, and close the door. Nasubi gets started on his new challenge. After all, he'd come this far, and he probably figures he might as well see how it goes. With his first sweepstake entries, he tries to win some clothes. He then spends the night on the floor. Every day, Toshio requests a copy of his journal. They make photocopies of this journal and share it with the show's audience. The audience that Nasubi doesn't know exists. Living on bread scraps and tap water, Nasubi spends all day and night writing sweepstakes entries. After two weeks, Nasubi receives his first package. It's a box of jelly. Now that he's received food for the first time, the production crew will no longer give him bread scraps. In fact, the production crew won't help Nasubi at all going forward. 
Masubi continues to write sweepstakes entries. He even wins a few prizes, including this bag of rice. Unfortunately, Nasubi doesn't have any cooking utensils. He tries to use a can and some hot water, but it doesn't work. With no way to cook his food, he has to eat the rice raw. The show's production spins this moment into a comedic light. <laughs> Nasubi doesn't have the kind of personality to resist, and because of that, this becomes his new life. Ratings for the show go through the roof. 20 minute recaps every few weeks of Misubi's life are released. The whole country is watching. The show had grown to such popularity that people were looking for the apartment Nisubi was in. To protect their asset, production needed to move Nisubi to yet another undisclosed location. Of course, they couldn't tell Nisubi this, because Nisubi didn't know the show was in production. They told Nisubi that they thought the move would change his luck. After all, at this point, he'd only earned about 300,000 yen, just about a third of the way to his final goal. Not only did they move Nisubi to a new apartment, but all the sweepstakes entries he'd sent to the previous apartment would no longer arrive. As if things couldn't get any worse for Nisubi, the production crew decided to hide his only bag of rice as a prank to see his reaction. Lost, broken, and with only one way out, Nasubi gets back to work. After six months of near total isolation, the camera has become Nasubi's best friend. The show's ratings climb even higher. By July, the show's following was so large that the production team decided to implement a 24-hour live stream. That way the audience wouldn't miss out on a single second of Nasubi's life. All while he doesn't know anyone's on the other side. In total, Nasubi had sent out nearly 20,000 sweepstakes entries. In the month of August, he was only able to win 6,306 yen towards his million yen goal. It's not until September, nine months after he first entered the apartment, that he would win his first toothbrush. This was especially important to Nasubi because after not winning any food in August, he'd run out of rice and had only been eating dog food for the last 45 days. Nasubi continues to enter sweepstakes. His luck even turns around and he starts to win some better, more expensive prizes. He's getting closer to his goal. The production decides to surprise Nasubi. They wake him up in the middle of the night with a flashlight. This has happened to Nasubi before. He's skeptical, but asks if he's finally won. The answer is no. Without any further instruction or reassurance, Nasubi is once again blindfolded and transported to an undisclosed location. They take him to an unknown beach, completely naked, and let him experience what it's like to be outside for the first time in 10 months. They're filming a holiday special. Nasubi still doesn't know that the show is in full production. He didn't even know he was wearing a microphone this whole time. 
They give him an uncooked bag of rice and a camera and leave him for the night. He makes a friend on the island. This is Nasubi's only company besides the camera. That is, until they take it from him. When they bring Nasubi back to his apartment, he realizes that they rearranged all of his belongings. They spun this like it was a good luck charm, a change of scenery. They really just needed an excuse to clean his room. This was, after all, being broadcast to roughly 17 million people. Nasubi's mental state was deteriorating. Meanwhile, companies were using clips from the show to promote their products. At one point, Nasubi won a PlayStation console. After doing nothing else for three days, Nasubi decides to ban himself from playing video games as they were taking too much time away from his sweepstakes entries. Nasubi gets back to work. He wins some notable prizes, including a tent, a brand new set of tires, and even some cash. Finally, it comes down to a bag of rice, and Nasubi's reached his goal. プロデューサーの祝福は続く。本当に本当に本当ですか。そしてここでプロデューサーが。11ヶ月と1日前に抜かされた私の服ですね。いいんですか。Nasubi's completed his journey, and to congratulate him, they take him on a trip to South Korea. They don't tell him about the show, because they still have to film their finale, and they have one more surprise for Nasubi. For old time's sake, they blindfold him, and they take him away. They tell Nasubi he must enter magazine sweepstakes until he's earned enough to match the cost of his flight home. They take his clothes back and tell him to get started. Nasubi doesn't speak Korean, so he doesn't know how to write down his name and the address. He also can't read the magazines for the sweepstakes that he's entering. To help with this, they give him two books to help translate between Korean and Japanese. Nasubi has to teach himself Korean. By now, Nasubi is such a cultural phenomenon in Japan that browser-based video games are being made about him. You'd play as Nasubi and enter in sweepstakes, with a leaderboard tracking players' top scores. It's at this point that the in-game text is changed from Japanese to Korean, so that players could feel the challenge Nasubi's going through. Nasubi gets lucky and receives a special bag of tea. 
He doesn't think it's worth much, but it's enough to get him to complete his new goal. Feeling cheated, the producers of the show change the rules and upgrade Nasubi's flight value from economy to business class. They don't tell Nasubi. After a few more days, Nasubi wins an expensive fur pelt. It's enough for him to get his business class ticket. The producers upgrade his ticket from business to first class. Nasubi begins to talk to himself about how he can't be sure of his winnings total. To avoid a negative appearance on the show, the producers decide to end the challenge early. Nosubi's blindfolded yet again, and finally brought to Japan. This time, there's a proper finale planned, and everyone's in on it. Except for Nosubi. They bring Nosubi on a large set with a live audience. The audience has been told to be quiet so they don't give away the secret. Nosubi's brought into a square room with a small coffee table. Instinctually, he removes his clothes in preparation for another stretch of writing sweepstakes entries. It's time to give Nasubi his grand prize. They tell Nasubi about the show, his fans, his fame, and thank him for his time. While in front of the audience, they play him a recap of the last 13 months. They reveal to him that they've been selling advertisements, videotapes, games, and even copies of his personal journal all across Japan. In fact, Nasubi's private journal became a Japanese bestseller in 1998. They serve Nasubi food in front of the audience so that everyone can watch him eat as a starving man for the last time. Nobody offers Nasubi clothes this entire time, even backstage. He conducts all his interviews naked. In fact, Nasubi will have difficulty wearing clothing again for the next six months, as his body's no longer used to the sensation of clothing. He spends that night alone in his hotel room, watching the finale of the TV show he starred in. At its peak, Radio Boy Prize Life would draw over 17 million viewers, making it easily one of the most viewed broadcasts in Japan at the time. After the show ended, Nasubi found that most of his charm and charisma he had used to pursue comedy had disappeared. He attempted to start an acting career after this, but ultimately fell into obscurity. Chasing the success of this experiment, Toshio Tsuchiya would go on to produce more shows like this until ultimately being cancelled in 2002. Nasubi is pushed forward despite his experience and has even conquered one of his dreams to climb to the top of Mount Everest. 
He accomplished this as part of a fundraiser he had set up after the 2011 nuclear meltdown in his hometown of Fukushima, Japan. It's interesting to see how universally accepted and even loved a production like Radio Boy Prize Life was just a short 20 years ago. It can even make you wonder if something similar is happening, hidden away somewhere on the internet right now, and we just don't know about it yet.